I pray that all is well with you and yours. Uh, having um, some brief technical difficulties, but I believe that um, I believe that God will see us through them all. And so if you could do me a favor, uh, if you can share this, if you wouldn't mind sharing this and uh, letting me know that you can hear me and that you can hear me well, uh, forgive me for this uh, brief technical uh, technical difficulty. Uh, if you can hear me pretty good, uh, just hit in the comments and let me know uh, that you can hear me and we're going to start on the word of the Lord for tonight. Uh, our system was acting up, but I believe that God is going to get glory. Or God is going to be glorified anyhow. I believe that some amazing things are going to be said and uh, some amazing things are going to be released into the atmosphere. And God is going to literally get the glory out of our encounter uh, and out of our meeting tonight. I want to first and foremost tell each and every one of you that I love you all so very much. Thank you so much uh, for being a part of this moment. I believe that I have something that is going to be able to transform and change your life forever. There are some amazing things that are getting ready to take place in your life. And I believe that what God wants to do in your life is allow heaven to collide with earth. And in order for heaven to collide with earth, you need the word of the Lord. That has always been God's genius to collide heaven and earth together. The genius of God has always been able to frame the worlds with his word. So whenever God wanted to do something new in the earth, he began talking. And I believe that God is doing something new in the earth because he's talking right now. And he's talking about you. He's talking about everything that you want to do. So before I get into a lot of the prophetic stuff I want to get into, I'm going to teach tonight. Uh, I am a teacher by nature. It's what I do. It's how I hear God. Um, it's how I prophesy. Teaching is really my lane. It's my zone. Uh, teaching is everything. I believe that whenever God wants to say something to a people, he will raise up a teacher so that there is no confusion. Uh, the purpose and the job of a teacher is to bring clarity to the body of Christ. So I believe that um, I believe that God is going to do something absolutely uh, amazing. I believe that something amazing is going to happen in our teaching tonight. All right. Are y'all ready? Could you do me a favor? If you have not already, could you share this? Uh, if you have not already share this for me, uh, y'all say hello to me. I can kind of see you uh, in the chat and y'all just say hello to me and just let me know that you're on uh, and you're ready to jump into the word of the Lord. Uh, y'all ready tonight? All right, listen, tonight I want to dig into something uh, that I've been studying. I want to dig into something that's going to be very, very deep and very, very profound, uh, but it's going to be exactly what I believe that God wants it to be, and it's going to be very fresh revelation. So let's dig into what God has to say uh, together. Uh, y'all, I had so many amazing things and uh, so many amazing surprises for y'all tonight. I mean, I, I was getting ready to give you my scriptures. All that stuff was going to come up on the screen, but for some reason, uh, the system shut down. So uh, I just want to say this, devil, you can shut the system down, but you can't shut my mouth. So uh, I'm going to find out a way uh, to get people the word of the Lord because people are hungry uh, for a deeper truth. People are hungry for something that they've never had before. Y'all ready? Let's jump into this. Let's go to Revelation chapter four. Uh, let's go to the book of Revelation chapter four. And there is a profound mystery uh, in this book. There is a profound mystery uh, in this text. And I believe that we're going to open this thing up together. Uh, the spirit of the Lord been speaking to me about the power to see and say. God has been speaking to me about uh, his authority in the earth and how he uses his mouth uh, and how he uses our mouth and the purpose of our eyes and our ears. I believe that God is trying to raise up men and women of God who have seen eyes, uh, uh, have seen ears and hearing eyes. I believe that God is really trying to say something to us that has never been said before. So go to Revelation chapter four 
and we're going to get into this. If you have not shared already, I need you to do me a favor, hit that share button and share this because this thing is going to get intense. Uh, if you don't have your Bible or an iPad where you can follow me in the word, I'm going to ask you to get your Bible out for me, please. Uh, get your Bible because I don't want you to call me crass because I'm going to show you some stuff in scripture that you're going to be tempted to call me a liar and I need you to be able to lay your eyes on the scriptures yourself so you can see that I did not make it up but I did exhort it from the scriptures properly and with integrity all right y'all ready Revelation chapter 4 and we're going to walk uh, we're going to walk this one verse uh, Revelation chapter 4 and we're going to walk this one verse and God is going to give us so much revelation out of this one verse. And I believe that you're going to get a lot of victory out of what I'm about to say to you tonight. All right. Revelation chapter four, verse one. Look at what it says. It says, after this, I looked and behold, a door was open in heaven. I feel like prophesying right there because doors are about to, hope, uh, about to open for you in heaven. Did you hear me what I said, Zion? I said doors are about to open for you in heaven check this out there was a door open in heaven and the first voice which i heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me which said come up higher come up hither and i will show thee things which must be here after the first thing that i want to say to you is we're going to deal with we're going to break this verse open we're going we're going to break this com completely open look look at the first part of this verse the first part of this verse it says after this after what all right let's let's understand uh what's happening right now let's break this thing open and let's understand what's happening right now if you really read the book of revelation you will understand that the book of revelation is not the book of the end time can we can we just solve that argument real quick can we solve that argument the book of revelation is not the book about the end time all right you don't believe me you're gonna call me crass go to revelation chapter one verse one uh so 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 that i can give you clarity uh and insight on this all right revelation chapter one Verse one, let's, let's, let's break this open. Let's, let's look at this. It says the revelation of Jesus Christ. Perfect. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified by his angel unto his servant, John. All right. Check this out. Revelation one and one. It says the revelation of Jesus Christ. It does not say the return of Jesus Christ. How did y'all get that? How did y'all, how did y'all interpret that to be the return? It is the revelation of Jesus Christ, which means that the revelation of Jesus Christ was once a mystery, but the mystery was revealed and the mystery became a revelation. Are you following me? So it was hidden until it was revealed and when it was revealed it became revelation i feel my teaching anointing coming on me now so with what with, with this with what chapter one is saying that john now has the revelation of jesus christ all right prophet well i need you to break something down for me what is supposed to come to pass shortly the understanding of the revelation Notice he's saying the revelation of Jesus Christ. So that means that there is an understanding that's supposed to take, that's supposed to come forth. There is an understanding that you are supposed to get. You are supposed to comprehend something. You are supposed to get something based upon the revelation of Jesus Christ. So this is not the return of Jesus Christ. This book is not about the return. I will argue anybody down. I will challenge anybody. I will go toe to toe with anybody who suggests that this book is about to return. So check this out. So go back, go back to chapter four. So we're back at chapter four, right? We're back at chapter four and chapter four says after this. So after what John has the revelation of Jesus Christ. And not only does he has the revelation of Jesus Christ now, but he hears a voice talks to him. He, hear, he hears a voice say to him, go to uh, Revelation chapter one. Go back to Revelation chapter one real quick because I, I want you to see, I want you to see a pattern that's taking place here. Now, Revelation chapter one, look at verse 10. Revelation chapter one and look at verse 10 so we can understand. And the reason that I teach at this capacity and I teach this way 
is because if there is ever a gospel that makes you afraid, it is not the gospel. It is deception. Okay. Because he did not come to make you fear him. He came so that you can love him. His weapon or his measuring tool of discipleship was not fear. It was love. So whenever you are preached something and you feel afraid, then the source behind it is deception and it's not Christ. So Revelation chapter one, verse 10, look at what it says. It says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as a trumpet. All right, stop, stop. Let's break this down. There is a law called the law of first mention, right? The first time trumpet is mentioned in the scriptures is when there is a voice that is spoken and the voice sounds like a trumpet. So if your rapture theory was true, and I don't believe it is, so we, so we can have a common understanding. If your rapture theory was true, you believe that there is an actual trumpet that's going to sound when he returns. When the scripture says it is a voice, it is not an actual trumpet. It's right here in the scriptures. I'm not making it up. I'm not twisting the Bible. I'm not putting something in there that's not there. Revelation chapter one, verse 10. He says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. So the voice Though if your rapture theory was true, so let me help you course correct your little rapture theory. So you have to tell people, if you believe Jesus is going to come back that way, you have to tell people it's not an actual trumpet. It is a voice. A voice is going to sound like a trumpet. Why? Because you have to understand these are symbols and these are signs. You have to understand that. Revelation chapter one, verse one, he says, he sent and signified it, which means that this revelation of Jesus Christ is sent to you in symbols and allegories and metaphors. The events in the book of Revelation are not actual events. They are metaphors, similes, and allegories that point to the revelation of Jesus Christ. So you cannot extract an event out of the scripture and make it mean something that it did not intend for it to mean. All right. So he says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard a voice like a trumpet. What did the voice say to you, John? Verse 11, Revelation chapter one, verse 11. Look at what it says. It says, I am alpha and omega, the first and the last, and which thou seest write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia. So he says, there's a voice sounding like a trumpet. The reason that the voice sounds like a trumpet is because this voice has to be the loudest voice in your life. This voice cannot compete with the voice of your emotions. It cannot compete with the voice of your intellect. It cannot compete with the voice of your doctrine. It cannot compete with the voice of your theology. It cannot compete with the voice of your pastor. It cannot compete with the voice of your pain. It cannot compete with the voice of your hurt. It cannot even compete with the voice of your culture. Matter of fact, I will even take it a step further. It cannot even compete with what you believe. Just because you believe it don't mean it's true. The only thing you should believe is what you can prove in the scriptures. Am I helping anybody tonight? Am I helping anybody tonight? So he says, he says, there is a voice that tells him the stuff you see, write it down. Now I have a question for you. He's being taken up in the spirit. And now that he's being taken up in the spirit, it says, now you're in the spirit and I want you to write what you see. But what he's seeing, here it is, what he's seeing is what he's hearing. So he had seeing ears and hearing eyes because he says, I heard and I saw. So whatever you hear in the spirit, you see in the spirit. It's right here. I'm not making it up. So you have to have hearing, uh, hearing eyes and seeing ears. So go back to Revelation chapter four. Are y'all getting this? Are y'all getting this? Is this making sense to y'all? Are you getting this? All right, so check it out. Revelation chapter four, verse one. He says, he says, after these things, 
So after he has the revelation, after he has the introduction of the revelation of Jesus Christ, because this is just one part of the revelation of Jesus Christ. Revelation chapter four, verse one. Y'all get it? He says, so after this, now I got to stop there because you have to understand he has this revelation of Jesus Christ. The voice comes to speak to him and he says, everything that you see, write it in the book to the book, uh, to the church, which is in Asia. So he's writing to the seven churches, right? He's writing and he says, grace be unto you. I don't got time to get into that grace thing because that grace thing will mess us up tonight. I won't get to what I really want to get to tonight if, 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 if we stick on that grace thing. But, but he says grace to you. There's a reason why he's saying grace to this church. He's saying grace to this church because they have a revelation. They have an insight. Whenever you have a revelation of Jesus Christ, you enter into a place of grace. But let's pull out of that real quick. So he says after this. So what is the after this? He's saying to the now go back to Revelation chapter one real quick. I want to show you something else. Revelation chapter one. He says, all right, verse 10, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard this voice like a loud trumpet. Verse 11, the voice is saying, I am alpha and I'm my omega. This is Jesus talking. Jesus is laying down his credentials, right? Jesus is giving his credentials. Verse 12, look at what it says. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me and being turned, I saw Seven golden candlesticks. Time out. He heard a voice and the voice was talking. The voice said who it was. I am Alpha and I'm, and I'm Omega. Write these things which I, watch this. He says, write these things which you see. Write the things that you see. Watch what he does. He says, he turns to see the voice, hold on, hold on. He turns to see the voice. When he turns to see the voice, he sees, the scripture says, seven golden candlesticks. So it's one lampstand with seven golden candlesticks on it, all right? So he turns and he sees this golden candlestick. What is the golden candlestick? Let's read. Verse 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks are one likened unto the son of man, clothed with a garment down to the foot and girded about the paps with a golden girdle. So when he turns and he looks at the golden candlestick, he sees one in the midst of the golden candlesticks which is christ so what is this trying to tell us this is trying uh, revelation chapter one revelation chapter two and revelation chapter three revelation chapter four is giving us a picture of the tabernacle because in the tabernacle when you walk into the tabernacle you walk into the holies uh you walk into the holy place and then if you go further, you walk into the most holy place. The candlestick is in the holy place. So he's saying you are in the holy place. But remember, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. So he's in the midst of the candlestick because he is the light that show like the scripture says, He's the light that shines in darkness. I wish y'all will follow me tonight. I'm telling you, I left a long time ago. You can go with me or you can stay where you at. So he says, he's the light that shines in darkness. So he's trying to show John it being in the midst of the seven candlesticks. He's trying to show John, I am the light that shines in darkness because the candlestick is in the holy place. And if you don't have him and what you deem to be the holy place, it is still a place of darkness. So he's showing, so he's telling John, my voice, when you turn to see, you're going to see light. Man, I wish I had some people that'll go with me tonight. He says, when you turn to see my voice, you're going to see light. 
That's the first thing you're going to see. So there is a voice talking and because you haven't given the voice your attention, you're still in a place of darkness. So he's saying that this place, this room that's supposed to be the holy place is a place of darkness until you turn to hear the voice that's shining out of darkness. A lot of you don't understand that you're in the realm of darkness because you haven't turned to hear the voice. Is this making sense to anybody? Is this making sense to anybody? Is it okay? So check it out. Let's 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 go further. So 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 the candlestick, the candlestick is right there. Uh, the candlestick is right there in the holy place. But the 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 obligation. The goal is to get to the most holy place. And the only way you can get to the most holy place is if there is a priest. There is no other way for you to get into the most holy place unless there is a priest. Go back to Revelation chapter 4. Is this helping y'all? Is this helping y'all? Is this, is, is this helping y'all? All right, so check this out. Go back to Revelation chapter 4. Because now we're getting ready to understand the tabernacle at a deeper depth. Check it out. He says, after this, so we know what the after this is. After he gets the revelation, after he begins to understand the revelation. Now, the voice speaks to him. He turns to see the voice. Remember that. Revelation chapter 1, 10, 11, and 12. Check it out. He says, after this, I looked. Hold on. Time out. Wait a minute. You looked in chapter one. What are you looking for again in chapter two? All right, y'all ready? All right, check this out. The phrase I looked does not mean to gaze. The phrase I look, that is literally the Greek word idol. E-I-D-O. Somebody put that in the comments. That is the, the phrase I looked. It's literally the Greek word idol. E-I-D-O. So that word idol means to know or to perceive or to understand. That word I looked is the Greek word idol, which means that I have a knowledge. My God, help me. It, it, it means that there is a knowledge that opened my eyes. I, I, I promise you I'm not lying to you. If you go research it right now, it's going, I, I want you to go to Revelation chapter four and I want you to research, I looked. That word looked is idol, which means knowledge to see. So he says, I looked, which means I have a knowledge to see something that I did not see before. So he says, after these things, I have a revelation, I have an understanding, I written it down, I written to the seven churches, and I looked, I have an understanding. I can see something that I did not see before because before I was just in the holy place. Now we're getting ready to have an introduction into the most holy place. Check this out. Look at what he says. Now, hold on real quick. I got to help you out with something because you're going to call me a liar. So I got to help you. Because, you know, y'all don't like truth. Y'all just love deception. So when you look at Revelation chapter 1, I want you to go to Revelation chapter 1 real quick. Because I'm about to show you something very, very powerful. Very, very powerful. Remember, remember in Revelation chapter 1, I showed you that he turns to see the golden candlesticks, right? Now, go to Revelation chapter 1, verse 18. Revelation chapter 1. Uh, verse 18 revelation chapter 1 verse 18 look at what it says he says i am he that liveth and was dead that's very important that's very important because now life is in effect but let me pull out of that and behold i am alive forevermore amen and have the keys of hell and death now that word hell right there that word hell right there comes from the Greek word Hades or it's translated Hades which means that it is Alpha Ido Alpha Ido write that down in the comments and in case you don't believe me it's Greek uh Greek 86 G86 in case you don't believe me it's G86 all right so it's the word Ido where we get the word hell now 
You think hell is underground where he cast you to. But according to this, hell is the realm of the unseen. <laughs> hell is the realm of the unseen, which means alpha, which makes it a negative particle, G86. I want you to look it up because I don't want you to call me crass, which is a negative particle, which, is, which means the realm of the unseen which is the unknown. So that means unseen, unknown. So what you're calling hell, Christ, the originator, the revelation of Jesus Christ calls it the unknown because to be absent of the revelation of him is the unknown. But John has a revelation now, which is why he turns to see the golden candlesticks with Christ in the middle of it. Christ is the light. And then what initially takes place? He has an understanding. So he looked the first time. And when he looked, the Bible says he was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Good God, that's so powerful. He looked in the spirit on the Lord's day. What is the Lord's day? What does that mean? What does that represent? That represents the spirit. When, when you talk about the day of the Lord, it's literally talking about you moving from flesh to spirit. So he says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, meaning I was in the spirit of the Lord hearing what the spirit of the Lord was saying, which is why when John is writing the letters, uh, the writing to the seven churches, which Jesus is talking, Jesus keeps saying, those that have an ear, let them hear what the spirit Spirit is saying. Now, I want to show you something very, very powerful. Go to Revelation chapter 3. Go to, go to Revelation chapter 3. Whenever you are absent from Revelation, you are considered in hell. I know you don't like it. Y'all going to call me crass. You're going to call me crazy, but you won't study. Whenever you are absent from the revelation of Jesus Christ, you are in the realm of hell, which is why there is a golden candlestick. I'm about to help you. Go to Revelation chapter 3. Go to Revelation chapter 3. Is this helping y'all? Is this helping y'all? Share this if you haven't shared this yet. Share this if you haven't shared this yet. Uh, hit the hearts. Share this. Hit them hearts for me if you haven't yet. Hit them hearts and share this if you haven't yet already. All right, check it out. Revelation chapter 3. Look at verse 21. Now, I want to I want to I want to give you a great mystery here. And, and, and I really hope that you can handle what I'm about to say. OK, I, I really hope you can handle what I'm about to say. But even if you can't, I won't get offended. I understand the, the Bible opens up with seven days. Pay attention to me. The Bible opens up with seven days. The ending of the Bible opens up with seven churches did you just catch that when you start the bible it starts with an introduction and then it goes into seven days when you're ending the bible it starts with an introduction and then it goes into seven churches i really pray that you're not foolish enough to believe that the seven days in the book of Genesis represent actual 24 hour days. I really hope you're not that gullible and that absent of revelation to believe that. But even if you do stick around me long enough and I'll open up the Bible to you in a way that you have never seen it before. Check this out. All right. Now let's go a little bit further. Revelation chapter three, uh, verse 21. Look at what it says. It says to him that overcomes, I will grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame. Who's talking? Who's talking? This is Jesus talking. John is writing, but Jesus is talking. And Jesus said to him that overcome, will I grant to sit with me on my throne, even as I also overcame, overcame and am sat down with my father, in his throne with my father in his throne now I want you to understand something here now 
in the Old Testament, the word rain. Hold on, 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 hold on. Let's let's connect something real quick. Let's let's connect something real quick. John John is writing and Jesus is saying to us, if we overcome, if we overcome, if we overcome, right? If we overcome, he talks to seven churches and to the seventh church, he says, if you overcome, he says it to the seventh church. He says, if you overcome, I will grant you permission to sit on the throne with me and my father. You will have a seat on the throne. But this is the thing I need you to really, really get in the book of Genesis on the seventh day. We, what did God do? He rest on the seventh day. He rest. Sabbath is not a day. Sabbath is a person. When you have the revelation of Jesus Christ in you, you enter into rest because you have overcome the carnality of the world. When you look at the seven churches, am I teaching too deep? Is this too deep for y'all? Am I am I teaching too deep? Do I do I need to pull out of this or no? Y'all 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 getting this or, or or what? Okay, all right, y'all getting it. Okay, all right, good. You have to understand that the seventh day is a day of rest. Now he says to the seventh church, if you overcome, you can sit on the throne. What do you do on the throne? You reign from the throne. You rest on the throne. I'm sitting in my chair. And I am resting. I'm not working. He says, but if you overcome, you will be able to sit on the throne. Why? Because I overcame the place of hell. I'm no longer ignorant to the revelation of Jesus Christ. I now have insight. I now have clarity. I now have understanding. And I now have relationship. But the throne will mean nothing to you as long as you are operating in the flesh. Let me prove it. Salvation means nothing to you if you don't believe it. The queen of England is not my queen because I don't live there. God is not the God of the throne of your heart because you're moving in the flesh and he's in the spirit. So he's not God of your life. <laughs> he's just creator of your life. Oh God, I just said something right. He's not God over uh, he, He's not God over your life. He's just creator. Why? Some of you about to call me a heretic. Some of you about to call me crazy. He created your life. Of course, he's still God of your life, but he's not king of your life. He's not Lord of your life because you're still moving in the realm of the flesh. Of course, you still belong to him. He created you. He, he, he molded you. He shaped you and he... <laughs> Blue breath into your body. And because he had a purpose, he created a framework to fulfill the purpose he had in mind and thought you could accomplish it. So of course you belong to him. But whenever you don't submit to his authority, whenever you don't submit to his will, whenever you don't submit what he's telling you to do, he cannot be your king. He can only be your creator. All right, are, are y'all getting this? Are y'all getting this? All right, check it out. Let's go deeper. 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 Somebody put in the comments, get out of the flesh. Get, get out of the flesh. Let's go deeper. Let's go deeper. Ver, uh, chapter one, uh, chapter four, Revelation chapter four, back to verse one. Revelation chapter four, back to verse one. Look what it says. He says, after this, I looked. After this, I have a knowledge. I have an understanding. Pay attention, y'all. Pay attention. He says, after this, I looked and behold, a door was open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it, it were as a trumpet talking with me. Wait a minute. Did we just not experience this in his life a minute ago? He said, I heard a voice like the sound of a trumpet. I looked. And I saw something. He saw the seven candlesticks. He saw the golden candlesticks. Now remember, the golden candlestick is in the holy place. But let's unlock this mystery. Let's unlock this level of revelation. Let's unlock this mystery right now. Pay attention. He says, and the first voice I heard was as a trumpet talking with me, which says, come hither. Now, that phrase, come hither, is the phrase ascend. 
it means a sin. That phrase, come up hither, come up hither, or come up here, is the word ascend. Now, it's the word ascend to the throne. Now, let me teach you something. In the Old Testament, when you see the word reign, it means ascend to the throne. So, when you hear in the Old Testament, God reigned, it means God ascended to the throne. Wait a minute. I thought God was always on the throne. Not if you don't believe it. And the moment that you believe what he says, he ascends to the throne of your heart. So look, look at what it says. He says, come up hither, come up higher, and I will show you things which must happen after this. Verse 2, he says, and immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. Wait a minute. Let's understand this now. The first time he heard a voice as the sound of a trumpet, he looked and saw seven golden candlesticks. Now this time, when he heard a voice as the sound of a trumpet, <laughs> he looked and he saw a throne. He saw an open door in heaven and saw a throne. I wish I had time to break this down the way I really want to break this down. Now, this is the thing that you have to understand. You have to understand this. In the holy place, it was a seven candlesticks. In the most holy place was the Ark of the Covenant. Now, the Ark of the Covenant is considered a throne. God tells Aaron, he says to Moses, God says to Moses, let me give you the scripture reference. God says to Moses uh, in Leviticus chapter 16. In Leviticus chapter 16, God says to Moses, verse, uh, Leviticus chapter 16 verse 2, it says, The Lord said to Moses, tell your brother Aaron that he is not to come whenever he chooses into the most holy place behind the curtain which is the veil in front of the atonement cover in front of the atonement covered of the ark or else he will die now i'm about to i'm about to jump into some revelation here so the throne is considered the ark of the covenant the ark of the covenant is considered the throne john hears another voice so he moves out of the realm of the unseen and now there is a light shining in darkness and the light shined in darkness is pointing to the throne and the throne, the voice from the throne. The, the Bible says that God said, I will speak to you from the mercy seat, which is covered by two cherubim. He said, I will speak to you from this place. So there is a voice coming from the mercy seat. My God, I feel like I feel like yo, I'm telling you. I, I, I'm telling you, I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. There, there is a voice speaking from the mercy seat. And the voice is saying, man, I wish I had time to break this down. The, way to go. the voice is saying, come higher, come higher, come higher. But every time he heard the voice, he saw something. You need hearing eyes and seeing ears. You need hearing eyes and seeing ears. Every time he, so this voice is saying, come hither. The voice now invites him to the throne. This voice now says, come to the throne and sit with me. Oh God. Now, why? I want you, I want you to think about this. I want you to think about this. Why is this voice saying, come higher? Why is this voice allowing him to see the throne? Why is this voice allowing him to peek into an open door in heaven? Because in Revelation chapter 3, it just said, if you overcome, I will grant you permission to sit on the throne. He looks and he sees one sitting on the throne, which is God. Now, we have to understand this. He's trying to pull him into the throne room because now he has overcome the carnality of himself. He now understands the mysteries of the spirit. He now understands the deeper things. 
He now understand those things that doesn't make sense. He now understand that, watch this y'all, we're about to go deeper. We're about to go deeper. Y'all ready? He now understands that the veil is torn from his eyes. Oh, God. Woo! The veil is torn from his eyes. Now, y'all, we got to understand this thing now. The veil is torn from his eyes, and now he can see, which means now he know, and now he understands spiritual things. Yeah. Help me, God. He now understands spiritual things. But can I, can I, can I, can I share a mystery with you all? Can, can I share a mystery with you all? You have to understand. You have to understand that there was a veil. I'm about to share a mystery with you. There was a veil that was separating those from the holy place from the most holy place. There was, a, there was a veil that separated. A veil is like a door. A, listen, listen to me. A veil is like a door that separates, right? This veil that's like a door that separates. What's happening is there is two different rooms now, but when the veil got torn, it was no longer the holy place in the most holy place. It is now the throne room. But there is a great mystery here. Go to John chapter 10. Keep your finger at Revelation chapter 4. Go to John chapter 10. Go to John chapter 10. This is, this is, this is really going to bless you. Go to John chapter 10. Go, John chapter 10. I want, I want to show you something. I, I, I believe this is really going to bless you. This, this, this is really going to bless you. Go to John chapter 10. And... Let's let's look at verse uh, let's let's look at verse uh, verse seven verse seven and eight John chapter ten uh, verse seven and eight uh, is this blessing y'all y'all getting this y'all getting this I love y'all so much I love y'all so much I'm glad that y'all are getting this all right check this out all right you ready now check this out John chapter ten verse seven and eight look what it says it says then Jesus said unto them again verily verily I say unto you I am the door of the sheep and all that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. Did you just read it? He says, I am the door of the sheep, but all that came before me are thieves and robbers. Why? Why are everyone that came before him thieves and robbers? Because everyone that came before him came through the veil. They didn't come through the crucifixion. <laughs> Did you hear me what I just said? The reason that they are thieves and robbers is because everyone before him came through the veil. But they didn't come through crucifixion. So they are thieves and... Okay, all right, 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 go, go. All right, all right, check this out, check this out. Look at, look, look at, look, look at, uh, look at verse one. Uh, 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 John chapter 10, verse one. Look at John chapter 10, verse one. Look at what it says. It says, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the sheep, I mean, not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But check it out. Verse two, verse two. But he that enters in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. He, he said, I am the door. So he that enters in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. I am the door. I entered in through myself. I entered in through myself. So he says, I am the shepherd. I am the shepherd. And those that came any other way, they are thieves and robbers. Why? Because they do not understand the power of the blood. They don't understand. Now, this is the thing that I need you to understand. Jesus is saying to them, those that came any other way, they're thieves and robbers. Can we take this deeper? Go to Hebrews chapter 10. Go to Hebrews chapter 10. I want to show you this. Go to Hebrews chapter 10. I want to show you, I want to show you something in Hebrews chapter 10. I, 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 think, you, I think you're going to love this. Uh, Hebrews chapter 10. Uh, that's, how did I get all the way to James? Okay. Hebrews chapter 10, 
uh, let's look at verse. Um, let's look at verse. Oh, right here. Perfect. This is the verse I want. This is the verse I want. Y'all ready? Y'all ready for this? Y'all ready for this? Check it out. Check it out. Look at what it says. Hebrews chapter 10, verse, uh, ver verse 19 and verse 20. Look at what it says. It says, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holies by the blood of... Now, I want you to understand something. Before we get to the holies of holies, I know you want to quote the verse, uh, come boldly to the throne. But before you come boldly to the throne, you have to even, you have to come boldly to him. So he's saying, look, he says, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holies by the blood of Jesus. Watch this. Watch this, y'all. Ready? Look at verse 20. Watch verse 20. Verse 20 says, by a new and living way. Remember, he says, I am the firstborn from the dead. I live. Now check it what he says. He says, by a new and living way, which he has, which he has consecrated for us through the veil. That is to say his flesh. Did you hear it right here? It says who has consecrated a way for us, which means he separated a way for us. He quarantined a way for us. He, he, uh, he sanctified a way for us. But look at what it says. It says, through the veil, that is his flesh. So the veil, which was in the temple, is his flesh. God, I hope I'm helping somebody tonight. The veil, which is in the temple, is his flesh. Now, this is the thing that I need you to really get. And I, if this is blessing you, hit these hearts real quick. I just want to know if this is making sense to anybody. If this this making sense to you? All right, cool. Bet. Appreciate you. Now, the veil is his flesh. Now, remember, go back to John chapter 10. Now we know that the veil is his flesh. His flesh is the consecrated way for us to come boldly to the holies, which means to approach the crucifixion. Now, check this out. Go back to John chapter 10. I hope this is making sense to y'all. Go back to John chapter 10. We're, 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 we're going to see this thing open up. John chapter 10. Now, I want you to look at verse four and five John chapter 10 verse four and five watch this this is about to bless you John chapter 10 verse four and five watch what this says it says when he put his forth his own sheep he goes before them and the sheep follow him listen for they know his voice and a stranger will they not follow but will flee from him for they know not the voice of strangers a stranger they will not follow for they know not the voice of strangers but his sheep knows his voice man i wish i had the type of time to really break this down the way i want to all right go back to revelation chapter 4 go back to revelation chapter 4 is this making sense to y'all y'all getting this Go back to Revelation chapter 4. Let's, let's, let's look at it. He says, he says, my sheep know my voice and they follow me. Right? My sheep know my voice and they follow me and a stranger they do not follow. One day I'm going to do a teaching on strangers. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to do a teaching on strangers so we can understand who the stranger is because the stranger is not the devil okay so i don't want you to believe that because that's not what the bible is talking about but look at what it says it says after this i looked and behold a door was open in heaven and the first voice which i heard was as a trumpet talking with me which says come up hither and i will show you things which must be hereafter and immediately i was in the spirit why because i heard a voice and i Follow the voice. Remember what he said in John chapter 1? John chapter 1 says, I heard a voice talk to me. And when the voice talked to me, I turned to the voice. So what is he saying? He is the door. He is the door. And his voice calls us through the door. Now, here is something else. Y'all ready for a deeper mystery? Y'all ready for a deeper mystery? Here is something else. He's the door. When he died on the cross, 
the veil was torn from top to bottom. Now, you have to understand this here. You have to understand for the veil to be torn from top to bottom. You have to understand how frightening that had to be. Because if the veil is torn from top to bottom, I can see the throne. I'm about to help you. you we, we, we're about to lose our mind right here. I can see the throne. And if I can see the throne, that means I could die. Because God's decree was no one can come to the throne except a priest once a year. But when Jesus died, the veil was torn from top to bottom. Why was it torn from top to bottom? And no one died. Matter of fact, y'all want to know what happened when the veil was torn from top to bottom? Matter of fact, go to Matthew chapter 27. Go to Matthew 27. This is about to mess y'all up. Go to Matthew chapter 27. This, this is about to mess you up. This is about to really mess you up. Go to Matthew chapter 27. Watch, watch this, y'all. Matthew chapter 27. This thing is about to get you. This thing about to really, really get you. Matthew chapter 27. Look at what it says. Matthew chapter 27. And I, 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 want, I want you to look at verse 50. Matthew chapter 27, verse 50. Y'all got to check this out. You got to check this out. It says, Jesus, when he, he had cried again, with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. Do we keep seeing the same pattern? We keep seeing the same pattern. We keep seeing a voice and the spirit, a voice and the spirit, a voice and the spirit. Check it out. He says, and Jesus with a loud voice yielded the ghost and behold, check it out. The veil, I'm in uh, Matthew chapter 27, verse 51 now. And the veil of the temple was torn and two from the top to the bottom and the earth did quake and rocks rent. Oh, I wish I had time to break that down. Okay, verse 52. And the graves were open and many dead bodies of the saints which slept got up. So Jesus was not the only one that resurrected when he got up. The Bible says that not only did Jesus get up when he was resurrected, but those that were asleep before him got up. Why did they get up? Because now the throne has full accessibility to the people. And the only thing that the throne is going to give is life. He died and tasted death for all of mankind so that we may have life and we may have a life and it more abundantly. The abundant life is talking about, I can't go there, never mind. But look at what it says. It says, not only did Jesus get up, but everybody that was in the ground that was asleep got up too. Why? Because now life was in the ground and everything that was in the ground that was supposed to be dead received life. Now, if I'm going to look at the throne, Jesus says that I am the door. So if he's the door, anything that comes through him is life and not death. <laughs> Calm down, Jeremiah. It's life and not death. So he's saying, check it out, verse 53. And came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many. Why? 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 Because now life has been released and death has been defeated. Yeah. Life has been released and death have been defeated. There's, there's, there's no more, there's, there's no more, there's no more death here. It's now just life. And he says, this is a great mystery. Go back to Revelation chapter 4. I hope y'all getting this. Y'all getting this? Y'all go back to Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4. I hope y'all getting this. <clears throat> I'm telling you, something about to happen in your life so big. I'm telling you as a prophet of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because you have a revelation that you've never had before. Something about to happen in your life that's going to shift things forever. 
This is the time for you to reject your emotions. This is the time for you to abandon how you feel. And this is the time for you to pursue an understanding of the revelation of Jesus Christ. The Lord spoke to me the other day when I was laying in bed sleeping. And God said to me that just because people are transitioning from life to eternal life, people are afraid of death, but death has already been defeated. And the spirit of the Lord began to minister to me and say to me, Jeremiah, no matter what you do from this day forth, you preach life. You preach life and you preach it more abundantly. And any gospel that imputes fear comes from deception. So the spirit of the Lord began to put new sentences and new sayings in my mouth. The spirit of the Lord anointed my tongue as the ready writer for me to exclaim, for me to acclaim and for me to exuberate and for me to exhort the words of the Lord. God is about to do something in our lives this month that is going to shock everybody around us. I don't know who I'm talking to, but you better prepare yourself. You better get ready because God's about to shake your world with his word. There is getting ready to be a brand new sentence and saying on your tongue. God is about to hijack your lips and the spirit of the Lord is about to speak. God is about to put brand new sentences in your mouth. God is about to put brand new speech in your mouth. You are going to have such an encounter with the God of heaven that your speech is going to betray that you have ascended to the throne. You are are about to ascend I came to tell you tonight that heaven has been talking I don't have to wait until January 1st to release the word of the Lord I'm telling you tonight God's about to start shaking the things tonight God's about to start in the month of December he's about to start putting things in their proper perspective things have been out of sync for a very long time but God is about to put things back in order Revelation chapter 4 I gotta I got it I gotta stop Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4. I got to stop. Revelation chapter 4. Y'all there? Revelation chapter 4. Look what it says. Oh, I'm in Hebrews chapter 4. I'm sorry. I'm asking y'all are y'all there, and I'm the one that's not there. Revelation chapter 4. Look what it says. It says, it says, and after these things, I looked and behold, a door was open in heaven. And, and the door was open because now the veil has been torn. And, and he says, I am the firstborn from the dead. Yeah, 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 yeah. I am the firstborn from the dead. He says, he says, I'm, I'm, I'm the firstborn from the dead. Then he says, a voice, a voice, a voice, and a voice became an image. All right, check this out. Now, remember, it says, I looked and I had a knowledge, right? Go to Genesis chapter 3. Go to Genesis chapter 3, verse 7. Genesis chapter 3, verse 7 Genesis chapter 3, verse 7. Look at what it says. He says, I looked, had a knowledge. Genesis chapter 3, verse 7. It says, and the eyes of them both were open. And they knew they were naked. Pay attention. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Whenever you are in the realm of the unseen, you try to look for your own provision. Come here. Whenever you are in the realm of the unseen, you try to look for your own provision. The woman saw that the fruit looked good for wisdom. It was pleasing to her eyes. And because it was pleasing to her eyes, the Bible says she took and she ate and her eyes were open, they saw they were naked. All this time, God has been providing their provision. But the moment their eyes were open to a knowledge that they were never supposed to have, their first response is to supply their own provision. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight. Their first response 
was to supply their own provision. God told me five years ago, he said, Jeremiah, it was never your job to maintain your own provision. It's mine. The day he told me that is the day I quit my job and I trusted him. I know you're scared of stuff like that because people tell you scriptures. If a man don't work, don't eat, but they can't explain what that means. I was talking to a lady today and I said, she said that to me. She said, a man don't work, he don't eat. I said, lady, that's not what that means. She said, well, that's what it means to me because people love being in the realm of the unseen. People love being in darkness. People love being in hell. And whenever your eyes are open to a knowledge that you were never supposed to have, like it unto your provision, you are in hell. That's what the Bible say. That's what the Bible said. The Bible says you are in the realm of the unseen, which is the realm of hell. That's what the Bible says. Now, Check this out. Go to John chapter 9. Go to chapter, John chapter 9, verse 39. I'm about to show you something. John chapter 9, verse 39. You ready? John chapter 9, verse 39. Look at what it says. John chapter 9, verse 39. Look at what it says. And Jesus said, who said? Jesus. And Jesus said, for judgment I come into this world that they which see not might see, and they which see might be made blind. What did he just do? He just healed a blind man. Jesus heals a blind man. Pay attention. He heals a blind man. The disciple said, who sinned? Who sinned that this man is born blind? Nobody sinned. This is a symbol of my mercy. Oh, God, oh boy, I almost, I almost took off running. This, this, this is a symbol of my mercy. This, this is a sign of my grace. This is a symbol of my mercy. This is a sign of my grace. Nobody's sin, but it's for the works of God to be made manifest. What is the work of God? That you may shut your eye to trying to work for what you want and open your eyes up to you are sitting on a throne. That's all I came to tell y'all tonight. You're sitting on a throne. I came to tell you that you don't have to work for it. You don't have to fight for it. You don't have to strive for it. You don't have to manipulate for it. You don't have to sleep around for it. You don't have to lie for it. You don't have to kiss up for it. You don't have to business call for it. You don't have to ring around the rosy for it. You ain't got to rub shoulders for it. You ain't got to shake hands with people you don't like. You don't got to laugh when ain't nothing funny. You ain't got to scratch when ain't nothing itching. You ain't got to drink water when you're not thirsty because God is going to do this. It is God that exalts a man, huh? Yeah, yeah. In a generation of people that's trying to exalt themselves, Jeremiah has decided, wait on the Lord. And again, I say, wait. I decided to wait on God. Calm down, Jeremiah. Calm down. I, I, I decided to wait on God. See, y'all, 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 y'all like trying to brown nose your way to the top. And trying to manipulate your way to the top. And share your little dumb preaching videos to the top. And try to make sure that you get to the top. By kissing up to people that you don't even like. And y'all like to play uh, 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 ministry chess. You get close to this one. Because this one will help you get close to this one. And this one will help you get close to this one. But the problem that I'm having with a lot of you church people. Is that you're good at trying to preach, pray, and prophesy to us in the church. But you can't touch nobody outside of the church. That's the problem I have with that. Just because we're gullible enough to let you believe that you are as powerful as you think you are so we give you courtesy falls that stuff won't work out there on the corner with somebody don't care nothing about your gift and don't know nothing about your mantle and don't know nothing about your title and don't know nothing about where you came from and don't know nothing about the Episcopal Church and don't know nothing about the Apostolic Church and don't know nothing about the Kojic Church that stuff ain't gonna work on them because they're not stupid enough to fall for your witchcraft and your sorcery that's why you don't preach to people outside of the church so you try to get here and preach to the same people and say the same thing to us and I hear I hear I sense I see and I say but you won't do it to people out there but God is about to raise up an army of people who is getting ready to forsake the assembly within and find a church without God is about to raise up a generation of people who are getting ready to display real symptoms of revival they're getting ready to go into the highways and the byways and they're getting ready to snatch those off of the corner and raise those one up something a miraculous it's about to happen there's a revival getting ready to happen and it's not going to look like your face on a stupid flyer telling us it's three days at seven o'clock a revival gonna happen in the street corner 
A revival going to happen in the mall. A revival going to happen in the salon. A revival going to happen in corporate America. God is getting ready to show people that he still got another move. You thought the chess game was over. I, I came to tell you that God told me to tell you he ain't made his best move yet. Get ready for the king to make his best move. Calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down. Get ready for the king to make his best move. Get ready for the king to make his best move. Get ready for the king to make his best move. Get ready for the king to make his best move. Get ready for the king to make his best move. The king is about to make his best move. Did you hear me what I said? I said the king is about to make his best move. The king is about to make his best move. I came to help you see and say the reason that you are seen is because you heard a voice. Now it's time for you to do something you ain't never done. It's time for you to reign. And the only way that you can reign is if you have heard the voice. I came to help you reign tonight. Your problem is you keep trying to hustle and God is trying to get you to reign. You keep trying to manipulate and God is trying to get you to reign. You keep trying to ask for engagements and God is trying to get you to reign. You keep trying to practice on us with your dumb hobbies and your Mr. Lose, but God is trying to get you to reign. Your problem is you're trying to get ahead of God and trying to master life without him. But anything with Without God is hell. <laughs> Anything without God is hell. Anything without his presence is deception. Anything without his permission is deception. Anything without him is the place called Hades. Anything without him is the place called the unseen. Anything that without him is the place called the unknown. God is getting ready to snatch some of us out of the unknown and place us in places that we ain't never been before. Get ready, y'all. Some amazing things are getting ready to happen. God is about to do some amazing things in our lives. I'm telling you, I don't know if you believe me or not. I don't know. I don't know how much you trust my voice or not. But I'm telling you, I heard a loud voice from heaven cry out and declare. Tell my people I ain't made my best move yet. Whew, calm down, Jeremiah. Don't do it. He said, tell my people I ain't made my best move yet. You thought you seen the hand of God. December, I'm about to make my best move. By the time we get to January 1st, we're going to see the God of a checkmate. Woo! Calm, Jeremiah, calm down. You're going to see the God of a checkmate. God told me to tell you he ain't made his best move yet. You thought the last thing that you seen him do was good. You ain't seen nothing. You thought the last rut he didn't got you out of was good. You ain't seen nothing. You thought the last abusive relationship he stripped away from you. It was something, but you ain't seen nothing. I'm talking about mental abuse. I'm talking about physical abuse. I'm talking about financial abuse. I'm talking about sexual abuse. I'm talking about uh, emotional abuse. I'm talking about psychological abuse I'm talking about entertainment abuse I'm talking about community abuse you thought the last set of relationships that you had God got you out of this one you ain't seen nothing yet God's about to show you that he's the God of a recompense God's about to show you that he's the God of restoration God's about to show you that he's the God would he reestablish himself on the throne of your heart God's about to hijack your heart for himself he's tired of playing games with you he's tired of waiting on the sideline until you love him like you're really supposed to love him until you care for him the way you're really supposed to care for him until you desire him the way you're really supposed to desire him I told you tonight get ready because he's about to put new sentences and sayings in your mouth God is about to give you a brand new glossary in your belly God is about to give you a brand new understanding in your intellect God is about to shift and shake God is about to establish and rearrange God is about to uproot and plant God is about to destroy and build he's he said I ain't made my best move yet he said Jeremiah Daniel Davis when you get on there tonight you tell them I ain't made my best move I want you to go look for the house again cause God ain't made his best move I want you to go look for the car again cause God ain't made his best move I want you to go look for another job cause God ain't made his best move I want you to start your own business cause God ain't made his best move you can have that dance company cause God ain't started his best God has 
has not made his best move. You thought his best move was you just having peace. No, God said, now you're getting ready to have peace and recompense. You thought that God's best move was him being able to give you solace in the midst of the storm. But no, you ain't seen nothing yet. God's about to deal with the heart and he's about to deal with the mind. He's about to deal with the spirit and he's about to deal with the soul. Things are about to get better for you. God ain't made his best move. He hasn't made his best move. God hasn't made his best move. If this is blessing, you hit these hearts for me. If this is blessing, you hit these hearts for me. Hit these hearts for me. If this is blessing you. I got one last verse I want to show you. One last verse. <clears throat> one last verse I want to show you and I'm out of here. One last verse. One la I t I'm telling you as a prophet of God, December is your month. This month is your month. Because you are about to hear the voice of a prophet and you are about to see what's on the other side of the voice now i wish i had time to open this up you got to join my mentorship class if you're not a part of my mentorship class i teach deep revelation like this all the time so if you want to be a part of my mentorship class please get with one of my staff members uh, uh get with me somebody somehow and get a part of this mentorship class if you really want to go deeper in the scriptures uh my staff is about to get mad at me but i'm going to open it up tonight if you want to be a part of a mentorship class, not this little fake fraudulent stuff that people do to manipulate your emotions and tell you stuff that you can find on Google. I'm telling you, if you want to be a part of a class that unlocks the mystery of scriptures, I'm opening it up to you tonight. I need you to inbox me, my staff. Uh, I need you to email us. Get a part of this mentorship class so you can grow. But don't get a part of it because you just want revelation. This is not just your average mentorship class. This is an institution that has the ability to transform your life forever. And if you don't want your life transformed, do not approach me because I don't have time to play church games with church people those days is over okay so check this out revelation chapter 4 last verse and i'm done revelation chapter 4 last verse and i'm done last verse and i'm done <clears throat> last verse and i'm done look what it says it says and he that sat was to look upon like a jasper like a sardian stone and there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight liken unto an emerald okay i wish i had time to break all these down i think i might do another live or another teaching to break down verse three but one thing i want to show you is that there has been an overcoming there has been a hearing there has been a seeing there has been a saying there has been an understanding there has been a revelation now there is one on the throne and the bible says there is a rainbow over the throne the rainbow represents a covenant that God made with mankind when he said that I listen listen to what I'm about to tell you I'm about to unlock something to you he said I will no longer flood the earth again and he sent a rainbow to signify his promise I wish I could tell you this now a rainbow means that there is water somewhere rainbow is the effects of a storm rainbow is the result of some type of shower or water that just been displayed where is the water where 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 is the water he says he said he says he says he says right here he says he says and he who sat on the throne there is a rainbow. I got to teach this again. I got to teach. I got to, what I got to, what I got to explain to you is the Jasper and the Sardian stone. Uh, and then he says, and there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight, likened unto an emerald. So the rainbow was not only just a rainbow, but it was like a diamond. It was like a jewel. It wasn't just some ordinary rainbow. This is why Jesus told the woman at the well, he says, I am the living water. <laughs> he, 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 he tells the woman, he says, drink of my well. Jeremiah, come. He says, he says, drink of my well. Why? Because after you experience water, you experience a covenant. After you experience water, you experience a covenant. So he says, drink of my well, a well that will never run dry. Why? Because my promise will never be broken. 
My promise will never be broken. He says, I, he says, I, I want to give you, I want to give you something. I want to give you something. And this time, because remember last time, the flood dried up and we were able to see the land again. But he says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water, which means that this is a continuous thing. Now, I want to go deeper in this. I do. Uh, so, 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 so jump on another live because I want to talk about the stones and, and why all of these stones are around the throne. It's going to bless you. It's going to blow your mind on why all the stones are around the throne. But I, I, I want to do this. Can, can, can I show y'all one more verse? Can, can, can I show y'all just one more verse? Can, can I do that? Y'all got time for me to show y'all just one more verse? I, 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 cause I, just one more verse. One, 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 one more verse. I, I, I gotta y'all got time? Just one more verse. One more verse. I, I, I want to show you just one more verse. One more verse. I, I, I want to show you this. I, I, I want to show you this. Just, just one more verse. Y'all got time? Y'all got time? All right, check this out. Revelation chapter 20. Go to Revelation chapter 20 real quick. Show you one more verse. Revelation chapter 20. Now remember, Jesus said in John chapter 9, he says, I come to bring judgment, right? Those that see may not see, and those that see may see. Y'all remember that? Y'all remember that? John chapter 9, he says, I come to bring judgment. Now I come to bring judgment. I come to bring judgment to you. He did not say, I came to judge you. Comprehension is very important. He did not say, I came to judge you. He said, I came to bring judgment to you, which means that I came so that you can bring what is out of balance into balance and that which is into balance, out of balance, because he is, he is the only factor. So he says, I came to bring judgment, which means that I'm bringing you something for you to utilize as a weapon. I don't, is, is this too deep for y'all? All right, Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20. Now, I don't have time to break open this whole verse, but let's just look at verse four. Revelation chapter 20, verse four. Look at what it says. And I saw thrones. Wait a minute. In Revelation chapter four, it was one throne. But in Revelation chapter 20, now there are thrones. Hmm. Revelation chapter four, hit these hearts if this is blessing you. Hit these hearts if this is blessing. If this is blessing you, hit these hearts for me real quick. If this is blessing you, hit these hearts for me. In Revelation chapter four, it was one throne. But now in Revelation chapter 20, there are thrones. Watch this. Pay attention. Watch this. I'm about to help you. And I saw thrones and they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witnesses of Jesus and for the word of God and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Now, wait a minute. Hold on. Now there are thrones. Why are there thrones? Remember in Revelation chapter three, he said, if you overcome, I will get you. I will give you permission or grant you permission to sit on the throne. So these are people that have overcome. And because they have overcome, and they have allowed their eyes to be closed to hell and open to revelation of Jesus Christ because without the revelation of Jesus Christ, you have absolutely nothing. So now they have judgment. And it's right here. They have judgment. And now that they have judgment, they are reigning on the throne. But look what it says. Look what it says. It says the the souls of them were beheaded. Why was the souls of them beheaded? I wish I had time to, 
to help you understand this better. But let me just give it to you. The souls of them were beheaded because now Christ is the head of their life and they are no longer the head of their life, which means that their thinking, their seeing, and their hearing is not of their own. They think, they see, and they hear only what the Spirit is saying and not what their carnality is trying to teach them. So they are being led by the Spirit of God. And as many of those that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Okay, all right, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I, this is why I know the book of Revelation is not the book about the end time. This is how I know it for sure. It's a book about the revelation of Jesus Christ. It starts off like that. Y'all let preachers who didn't have an understanding or who didn't have eyes to see to make you f afraid of the book. Now you think everything in the book means damnation and condemnation and destruction and all of that. But you stick around me long enough, you, 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 listen, you'll be on cloud nine. All right, so I hope this blessed y'all. I really hope this blessed y'all. I really hope this blessed y'all. I really hope this blessed y'all. Y'all, I'm telling you something major getting ready to happen. Something is about to happen in our life. I want to take up a seed tonight. I want us to do 88. I need my staff, somebody from my staff. I need you to sow my seed first. I only need... 11 people to do this i don't need nobody else to do this nobody else if if if, if you're one of the 11 i need you to do this everyone that souls tonight i'm going to release the word of the lord to you i am i just feel like prophesying i just feel like sitting in my little prayer room prophesying so everybody that releases the word of the lord to you i i mean everybody to release us a seat tonight i'm going to release the word of the lord to you i just feel like prophesying because it's on me and um i just feel it because i just feel it. i just really feel it very 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 strong um, but tonight, let's sow 88. Let's do 88. Let's sow 88. I, I want to be the first to sow. Is one of my staff members on here uh, to help me sow? Uh, do I, let's do 88. 88. And, um, and, 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 and there's, about, there's about four or five of you that can do 176. That's 88 twice. 176. That's 88 twice. I really... Uh, uh, I, I really feel like that we're about to seal something with our seed tonight. We're about to seal something uh, with our seed tonight. All right, let's pray real fast. I feel so, I feel like prophesying to some of y'all. All right, I'm not. I'm gonna wait. Um, okay. All right, let's let's pray, and um, I'm going to let y'all go. Let's pray. Um, let's pray, and I'm going to let y'all go. Yeah. Father, I thank you for your word and I thank you for revelation. I thank you for insight and I thank you for clarity. You came and you descended and you allowed us to ascend into your throne, into your most holy place where you shared mysteries with us. You shared insight with us. You shared clarity with us. You told us things that we did not know. You told us things that we could not comprehend and understand on our own. And for that reason, we tell you, thank you. So Father, tonight we're going to bring you an offering. We're going to bring you a seed we're going to lay something at your presence as an indication that we are making a covenant with our next season we make a covenant with the standards of what's next we do not reject we do not argue we do not fight we do not neglect negate the standards that you are putting on our lives for us to overcome and achieve what you are telling us to do next and for that reason father we allow ourselves to yield to you Father, I thank you for the time that you come and you spend with me and the time that you come and you talk to me, the time that you come and you wrap me in your arms and you wrap me in your presence and you speak to me mysteries that I would have never been able to understand or comprehend on my own. But you love me and you rock me and you talk to me and you open my eyes up to things that I was previously blind to. And I thank you that you are the God that refused to leave us ignorant. You are the God that refused to leave us blind. You are the God to re that refuses to leave us stranded. You are the God that loves us so much that you want to pour your love on us continuously, consistently, all the time. Father, I thank you because you are amazing. Now, Father, as we get ready to bring this moment to a close, is there if there is ever another time that you want me 
to exhort revelation to your people. I yield my heart to it. People are hungry for truth. They're hungry for revelation. They're hungry for insight. They're hungry for something that they've never heard before. But that thing, I do understand and comprehend that the thing that they are most hungry for is you. They have been given counterfeits. They have been given hybrids. They have been given falsities. They have been given idols. But Father, they are hungry for you, which is why some of them are drying up. Some of them are angry. Some of them are depressed. Some of them are tired. Some of them are ready to walk away from what we call the local assembly underlined as the church. But Father, you are raising up people who don't mind spending enough time with you to give your people truth. And so, Father, I'm asking that you restore their hope. I'm asking that you restore their faith. I'm asking that you restore their insight. I'm asking that you restore their desire. Father, give them a love for the scriptures like you have given me because it is through the scriptures. It is the entrance of your word that bringeth forth life. And because it is the entrance of your word that bringeth forth light, we understand that whenever we hear the right word from you, that there is peace and harmony in our hearts. You are the God that allows the morning star to arise in our heart and show us things and shine light into darkness where we were once blinded, we now see. And I thank you that you allowed yourself to be stripped to a cross. You allowed yourself to be buried in a tomb. You allowed yourself to go to the other parts of the earth and ascend it, and you conquered death and you made hell behave. And I thank you for that. It's in Jesus' name I pray. It is so, and it is done by the blood of the lamb. Amen. I love each and every one of you so much. Um, if you're sowing tonight, I want you to do me a favor, and uh, I want you to... Um, I want you to, um, I'm sorry, y'all, excuse me. Uh, if you're sowing tonight, I want you to do me a favor. And after you have sown, um, after you've sown somehow, um, I believe I want you to email us, uh, email me at info at jeremiahddavis.com. Uh, email me after you've sown your seed. I want you to email me and I want you to title it. Uh, I've sown, I've sown my 88 and, um, there's about four or five of you that can do that 176. That's a double the seed. Some amazing things are getting ready to happen. Uh, so if you're going to double your seed or whether you're sowing that 88 or, or whether you're sowing, uh, the 176, it doesn't really, really matter. Um, God is still pleased with it all. And maybe you don't have that 88. Maybe you don't have that 176. I want you to grab a seed of $50 or more tonight. And I want you to sow. And after you've sown, I want you to tell me, prophet, I've sown and I'm releasing the word of the Lord to everyone that have sown, um, everyone that have sown tonight. I'm going to spend time releasing the word of the Lord to you all and giving you what I believe heaven is saying. All right. I love each and every one of you. I pray that you have an amazing day. I really pray that this broadcast, this moment, uh, the power to see and say, and because this is the power to see and say the power to see and say is in your revelation of Jesus Christ. If you don't have a revelation of Jesus Christ, uh, you're really just wasting your time and you're robbing people of theirs. And um, one thing that I will hate to do is rob people of their time, rob them of their intelligence and rob them of uh, their trust in me to feed them manna from heaven. And I'm only giving them something I've listened to on Google or something I've uh, haven't even had a chance to study. I think the danger with some preachers, this is just the spirit of wisdom in me now. I think the danger of some preachers is that they don't study. Um, they listen to other people so much and they begin to mimic them. And whenever you begin to sound so much like somebody else uh, and you begin to mimic somebody else so much, whenever there are two of you, one of you are irrelevant. Um, and so if you are a preacher listening to me, do not become the irrelevant preacher. Find what you are good at, perfect it, master it. Uh, I think that I am a master teacher of the scriptures. Uh, I was born a prophet, but I am anointed to teach. I love each and every one of you. Have an amazing night, everyone. And I will talk to you soon. Remember, what's to come is so much better than what's been. I don't think you heard me. I said What's to come is so much better than what's been. Good night, everybody.